Hello, everyone. We'll talk about technical tips for secure Apache Hadoop cluster. Uh, my name is Akira Ajisaka. Uh, I'm a software engineer in Yahoo Japan Hadoop team, and also an active Hadoop committer and PMC member. Last year, I talked about upgrading HDF to 3.3.0 in ApacheCon. And in ApacheCon Asia, now we will talk about Hadoop security. Uh, first, I'll talk about the overview of this session. First of all, I want to ask you a question. Do you know how the cluster is secure by default? Uh, the answer is no. Without Kerberos, uh, Hadoop is vulnerable. An attacker can easily impersonate two super users, such as HDFS and YAN user, uh, if the cluster is configured without Kerberos authentication. Uh, this talk is for users and administrators who want to know more things about Hadoop security. We investigated many features related related to open source Hadoop security, uh, including Hadoop systems such as Hive, Spark, Tez, Uji, Libby, and so on. We mainly talk about two big topics. The first topic is wire encryption in Hadoop ecosystem. And the topic will be talked by Mr. K. Corey. The second topic is HDF transparent encryption. I'll talk about this topic. Uh, sorry. Uh, Kori-san, would you start your presentation about why encryption and Hadoop system? Great. And now, first, okay, Kori will talk why your encryption in Hadoop system. I'm a data platform engineer in the Hadoop team and the Kubernetes team at Yahoo Japan. I have worked with Hadoop through constructing a way to upgrade and continuous delivery for HFS 3.3, and now researching operations for more secure Hadoop clusters. In tandem with Hadoop research, I'm also providing and uh, administrating the on-premise Kubernetes cluster for Hadoop client environment. I am mainly focused on filling gap between data platforms and it between experience of users developers and operators. To get more security than just Kerberos authenticated and perimeter security, encrypting both data in transit at, at rest are preferred. Wire encryption leads to protection and mitigation from internal threats like packet sniffing. Achieving end-to-end -end encryption is often part of the requirements of security compli compliance like NIST SP-800171. This is a list of wire encryption types and affected components we manage. In this presentation, I'll introduce focus on delivering typical cases with no downtime for Hadoop, Spark, and Hive, and pitfalls we face through encrypting Zookeeper. First, TLS encryption for Hadoop Web UI and REST API can be applied via setting HTTP policies fixed parameters. Switching to HTTPS only in existing cluster will lose job history server and timeline server from node managers. So to apply without downtime, at first set the HTTP policy parameters to HTTP and HTTPS to save both protocols while rolling update. Then change history and timeline server endpoint and restart apply, parallel service HTTPS only. Prefer using Hadoop credential provider rather than SSL server XML with plain text to provide service certificates and passphrases. It can separate Unix permissions from base config files and prevent unexpected exposure outside of Hadoop security sensitive config keys filtering. This approach is also based outside of Hadoop, which supports Hadoop credential provider. Next, RPC in Hadoop can be encrypted by setting Hadoop RPC protection parameter. This bio finally propagates to DFS data transfer protection parameter to encrypt data node RPC. This, this encryption works on SSL layer using successfully authenticated Kerberos negotiation 
negotiation instead of TLS. She apply without downtime to existing hardware clusters running with Kerbal source authentication and non-encrypted RPC. The value would be set would be set as privacy comma authentication, which access both encrypted and non-encrypted RPC while the first update all hard service and clients. After components recognize both values, then load out again only with privacy value to restrict encrypted non-encrypted RPC communication. Even RPC encryption is done, data transfer protocol is not encrypted yet. This path could be encrypted by setting DFS encrypted data transfer parameter and setting DFS encrypted transfer cipher switch to AES slash GTS rational padding to use AES algorithm. Data transfer protocol only works between HDFS client and data nodes, so it will be decrypted before storing blocks to HDFS. Applying this encryption without downtime will not be completed by only changing configs. Whether or not to encrypt data transfer is determined by the class called trusted channel, but it is not dynamically detected by built-in implementations. So managing a list of data nodes with encryption data transfer per operation or implementation of own, our own trusted channel class is required. So Spark could enable encryption across several layers with these parameters as I have talked about Hadoop. But Spark history cannot serve with both HTTP and HTTPS. So application history may fail to persist while switching its protocol. On RPC encryption, it can be zero downtime through taking steps without Spark network SSL server always increase parameter. Spark IO encryption enabled parameter for shuffle encryption, not only in transit, but also persists into HDFS or local disks. Encryption for high workloads uses both TLS and SSL encryption through the client to state store. SSL protocol encrypts JDBC connection between client and hypersubject with binary mode, and Swift protocol between client and hive meta store. If there are hive subject with HTTP mode, TLS encryption is used instead. Another JDBC connection between hive subject or hive meta store and remote RDBMS like MySQLs is also preferred to be encrypted. And below them, shuffle in execution engines use TLS encryption. It requires valid service certificates per all node managers. From here, I will introduce the challenges we have encountered. Unlike node manager demos, which launch as Yarn Unix user on each node, application master and Spark driver processes run as the user who submitted the job in the Unix namespace. This means server certificates for them also must be read by the user. Otherwise, plain text HTTP communications still remains inside the habit cluster. In general, web UI of application master and Spark driver on cluster mode will not be accessed directly, but via a web application proxy in resource manager. So the accessing them from users seems secure at a glance, but communications between resource manager and application master are still plain text. As a fundamental solution since Spark 3.0 and MapReduce 3.3, users can bundle their own certificates to submission, but for test is not supported yet. Finally, I share encryption for Zookeeper servers and clients and restrict anonymous requests for them. Zookeeper does not respect encryption levels like privacy or OSCONF or SASL QOP. So we choose TLS for encryption and remain SSL for authentication and HDL with parameters below. Serving and communicating Zookeeper with TLS using NETI is supported since version 3.5.6. And we found that Zookeeper server could not omit plain text port to launch, to launch and the 
upgrading procedure with no downtime fails. We fixed it and contributed at Zookeeper 4276. It's not been meshed for now. Connecting Zookeeper server with TLS also requires version 3.5 or 6 or above for clients. We rebuilt affected components with replacing Zookeeper dependency to 3.5.6, a patch creator and Jetty in dependencies also be updated. Then for connecting with Jetty and TLS, we append JVM arguments here to each Hadoop client. After that, we have noticed that Zookeeper servers could accept requests without Kerberos authentication and try to restrict them. Enforcing authentication is supported in Zookeeper since 3.6.0 and parameter changes in 3.7.0 as enforced.auth prefixes. Restriction led to a side effect that job submission from Hive CLI and Uzi Hive Action, which has no authorized issue or delegation, failed to connect Zookeeper when acquiring the lock for Hive Metastore. Workloads via Hive Server 2 don't reproduce the case, so it can be solved submitting via Hive Server 2 or Uzi Hive 2 action. Now my part is over. Thank you, Kori san. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, begin the next topic. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, uh, I will talk about the HDFS transparent encryption and what you need to consider when deploying them in production. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce the background of HDFS transparent encryption. Originally, HDFS data is split into blocks and the blocks were directly written to the local disks of the data node, uh, so they, they are not encrypted, encrypted by default. Nowadays, there are some regulations for data encryption, such as PCI DSS for uh, NIST, uh, so you will need to encrypt your sensitive data in some way. Uh, data encryption is implemented in one or more of several layers. Encryption at the application layer is the most secure, but it is difficult to implement in practice. Especially in the case of Hadoop, the encryption key needs to be loaded into the YAN application, and it is difficult to manage the keys securely. Uh, secondly, uh, there are cases where encryption is done at the database layer, uh, many RDBMSs have this feature, but encrypting, encrypting the indexes will affect the performance. Uh, encryption at the file system layer provides good performance and transparent access, but it's not flexible. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to encrypt a specific file in the file system, you cannot use the file system layer encryption. Uh, this layer encryption also offers good performance and transparent access, but it cannot do more than preventing disk theft. Uh, in this context, uh, HDFS transparent data encryption sits between the database layer and the file system layer, and it is implemented as a feature that combines performance, flexibility, and transparency to some extent. Uh, this is a sequence diagram for writing encrypted data to HDFS. Uh, there are various processes uh, being, ex being executed internally uh, in DFS client, uh, but since these processes are executed inside Hadoop's DFS client, uh, users do not need to implement these processes at all, and there's no need to make any changes to your applications. That's why it is transparent. Uh, let me talk about the diagram. Okay, uh, I'll use a laser pointer. Okay. Uh, when client creates a file in HDFS, uh, first client requests name, name, name node to create a file. Uh, then name node gets uh, EDEK, uh, encrypted data encryption key for the file. 
Uh, next, uh, Hadoop KMS will create a DEG, data encryption key, and get the key encryption key uh, from key provider. Uh, then Hadoop KMS will encrypt the D, uh, DEK uh, by the KEK and returns uh, name node, uh, oh, sorry, returns EDEK to the name node. Then name node stores uh, EDEK to its FS image and returns EDEK to client. Next, uh, then DFS client have EDEK. Uh, encrypted data encryption key. Uh, next, DFS client uh, will uh, ask uh, Hadoop KMS to decrypt the EDK uh, and return the DK. Uh, finally, uh, DFS client will uh, encrypt the data by the data encryption key and write encrypted data to data nodes. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there are two new components in transparent data encryption, Hadoop KMS and Key Provider. Uh, in this presentation, I'll show you how to configure Hadoop KMS and Key Provider in production. Uh, first, let's talk about Key Provider. Key provider itself is an API provided by Hadoop, and Hadoop provides its implementation Java Kitty Stock provider. Uh, in, it, in this implementation, KEK uh, key encryption keys are stored as JCEKS files uh, in Hadoop compatible file systems, uh, such as local file system, HDFS, S3, and other cloud storages. However, the Java Keystock provider is experimental and requires careful handling of passwords. And the JCEKS file itself is not encrypted in many of the Hadoop compatible file systems. For that reason, uh, it is not recommended in production environments. Uh, Apache Ranger uh, is an open source framework to enable, monitor, and manage comprehensive comprehensive data security across the Hadoop ecosystem, and Apache Ranger provides Ranger KMS. In Ranger KMS, Ranger Keystop Provider is used, and it is also an implementation of the Hadoop Key Provider API. Unlike Java Keystop Provider used in Hadoop KMS, Ranger Keystop Provider allows KEK to, KEKs to be stored in the RDBMS. KEKs are encrypted by the Ranger master key, and the Ranger master key is stored in plain text in the RDBMS by default. Uh, on the other hand, the Ranger master key can be stored in Luna hardware security module uh, in order to meet some requirements such as PCI DSS and FIPS. So do you have to use Ranger KMS uh, the hardware security module or other vendor solutions uh, to BC, uh, such as Cloudera to be PCI DSS compliant? Uh, no, we, uh, you don't have to. Uh, if we, your company has a company-wide key management infrastructure, uh, you can extend Key Provider API to work with it. The Key Provider API itself doesn't have many methods, so many methods, and in fact, there are only three methods that need to be implemented if you just want to use it for HDFS data encryption. Uh, the rest of the methods are also useful for operations, but they are not required. Uh, so I'd like to say the minimum uh, is three methods. Uh, however, if you don't implement the optional methods, you still need to create, delete, list, and roll keys uh, in some way. Uh, in fact, LinkedIn has posted on their blog that they are working with their own key management service, LIKMS, to encrypt HDFS data. And Yahoo Japan has also, uh, the, also used the Hadoop Key Provider API to work with our company's internal key management infrastructure. 
I actually implemented the methods and it is only about 500 lines, including test code. So it is not so difficult. Uh, when extending the Hadoop API, API compatibility is a concern for Hadoop users and administrators. Actually, the key provider API is public, but it is treated as unstable. Unstable in Hadoop means that incompatible changes are allowed at any time. But as a matter of fact, there, have, there has been no incompatible changes since Hadoop 2.6.0 when the key provider API was introduced. Also, Apache Ranger has been using the key provider API for a long time since 2015. So let's make this API stable. I wrote a simple patch in Hadoop uh, 17544. Uh, once it is merged, you can use the key provider API without any worries. Uh, next, I'll talk about Hadoop KMS. At first, I'll briefly introduce about Hadoop KMS itself. Hadoop KMS is a JT web server that accepts requests from Hadoop clients and name nodes. Hadoop KMS has a separate access control from HDFS, so even if the HDFS authorization is compromised, it will be blocked by the KMS. For example, HDFS user is a super user of HDFS. Uh, however, uh, if KMS is properly configured, HDFS user cannot decrypt the HDFS data. Uh, the KMS HL is managed in KMS HL's XML, and the changes in the configuration file are hot reloaded. Uh, it means that you don't need to, need to restart Hadoop KMS instances when modifying HL. I will introduce an example of the HL configuration. If user wants to decrypt data in the HDFS encryption zone, where the data encryption key is encrypted by key A. Uh, you need to set key A share key A decrypt EEK properly. Here, uh, okay, uh, this, is, uh, the, uh, this is a sample configurations. Uh, here, uh, for HA and scalability, multiple KMS instances are supported. Uh, now, Let's take a look at how to deploy multiple KMS instances. There are two main ways to deploy. The first is to use a load balancer or virtual IPs. And the second is to use the load balancing KMS, provide, a KMS client provider. Uh, Hadoop security key provider path is a property for KMS URI. And if we write multiple KMS URIs here, the load balancing KMS client provider will automatically be used. Uh, in the provider, the client will randomly connect to one of the configured KMS URIs. By setting it up in this way, you can use multiple KMS instances without the load balancer or virtual IPs. However, if you have a load balancer, if you have a load balancer or virtual IPs, it's better to use it. The second method requires changing the client settings when scaling out or decommissioning KMS instances. On the other hand, when using load balancer or VIPs, there's no need to change the client settings. Also, if you can, if you can use a uh, load balancer with health check, clients can be sure to access to a health KMS, and it saves clients retry costs. Uh, there are also some things to note in the settings for deploying multiple KMS. The first is that uh, the delegation tokens must, by must be synchronized by using Zookeeper uh, Delegation Token Secret Manager. Uh, and the second is when your KMS instances are match hold, you need to set Hadoop Security Token Service Use IP to false to use a host name that match with the host name of the SSL certificate. Uh, if true, uh, it is true by default. Uh, fails to validate SSL certificates, 
uh, in such an environment. And neither of these were not documented until recently, but both are very important. And if you forget to configure them, your job will not start properly in such an environment. Uh, I posted patches for both of these and fixed them, fix them because I had problems setting up KMS myself. Uh, and next is tuning. Uh, Hadoop KMS cannot handle more allocations than name nodes, so it needs to be tuned. There are a number of ways to tune it, such as reducing SSS session size, uh, setting HTTPS idle timeout, and increase, increasing max file descriptors, and so on. There is a good summary in Hadoop 15743, so please visit this URL to check it out. Also, in Hadoop components, both H Hadoop, Hadoop KMS and HTTPFS runs on JT server, and the configuration for JT are almost the same. Therefore, the summary in the Jira issue is useful to tune HTTPFS, uh, tune not only Hadoop KMS, but also uh, HTTPFS. Uh, now, I would like to summarize HTTPFS FS transparent data encryption. Uh, there are a lot of things to keep in mind when setting, it, setting up this feature. How will you manage your KE kits? Uh, will you use Ranger KMS or will you integrate uh, Hadoop KMS with your internal key management systems? Uh, secondly, uh, how, will, how will you deploy multiple KMS instances? We introduced two methods to deploy multiple KMS instances using a load balancer or lining up host name in the client configuration. Also, tuning the KMS may be required. You need to be careful in setting up encryption zones, uh, KMS HLs, and proxy server uh, impersonate settings. It has been seven years since this feature was implemented in 2014 but this configuration is not straightforward. So please be careful in settings. Uh, in the following slides, I will introduce other considerations for building and operating secure Hadoop clusters. Uh, let me introduce one of the latest features of Hadoop. In Hadoop 3.3.1, you can now update SSL certificates without restarting the daemons. In JT9, hot reload of SSL certificates has been introduced. Almost all the devils except data nodes rely on JT9 via Hadoop HTTP server to cross, so now Hadoop can use this feature. In particular, in a huge HDFS cluster, it takes more than 30 minutes for name nodes to restart, so this feature makes it much easier for operation. Uh, finally, we introduce the other considerations. Firstly, uh, it is important to be ready to upgrade at any time. Uh, it is because uh, CV is uh, sometimes published and the software vendors may want users to upgrade. Uh, so it is important to be ready to upgrade. Uh, secondly, the se security requirements may increase or strong, increase and strong while or after building Hadoop cluster. So you need to prepare for that early. Note that you need to consider not only the configurations, but also the operations for Hadoop clusters. For example, there may be separated and dedicated operation room for security, uh, uh, secure, secure cluster. So you need to prepare that you can operate Hadoop clusters in such environment. Uh, this is the last slide. In this talk, we introduce many technical tips for secure Hadoop cluster. However, they might change it in the future. You need to catch up with the open source community to get the latest information. Lastly, we talk about the future works. As Kori san said, there is a problem in enabling HTTPS in application master and Spark driver web UIs uh, because of the permission problem in SSS. SSL certificates. Uh, there is another problem in KMS. Uh, sometimes KMS client cannot impersonate to real user correctly. 
And so we have to treat some users, uh, such as Yan and Luji, as super users in KMS SCRs. Uh, we want to fix these issues later. So our presentation is finished. And thank you for listening to our presentation. Uh, any questions?